moving going on out there. And no, I am not talking about my personal move to Atlanta. A lot of moving today. Conversation for another day. I'm not even talking about Jim Sloshnagel heading 106 miles up the road to the ATX in the car with Chris Del Conte. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the Texas Longhorns are officially in the SEC starting today, July 1st. I actually think a lot of people are going to be really surprised by how well Texas fits in. I think it's more fits really well like a glove, honestly, for being honest. A perfectly fit glove. Uh, I actually love the fit for both new kids on the block. I'm going to say the O word a little bit. Oklahoma, don't get mad at me, Texas fans. But here, just briefly, I'm going to talk about it. I, I think both these two teams fit perfectly. Texas and Oklahoma, same traditions, expectations, pageantries that many of the 14 other SEC teams share. And shh, do not tell Texas A&M or Missouri. But I actually think these two teams, I don't think a lot of people would agree with this, that these two teams definitely fit the SEC a lot better than those two teams. And both those teams have a fair gripe to go tell me to shove it. They do, because A&M won the Heisman with Johnny Manziel their first year in the league, only lost one game to Florida to open up the SEC play, arguably the hottest team to end the year in college football. Missouri uh, in 13-14 won the SEC East back-to-back year. So two of the first three years, they won the East. I think they could tell me to go kiss my butt. They, I mean, they could. They could. They could go tell me to kiss my ass. Like, it would. That's fair. But I think from an overall brand, like I mentioned, tradition, expectation, pageantry standpoint, these two teams fit it absolutely better than anyone. But to my main point here, all three of the big three sports, men's basketball, football, and baseball in Austin, should finish top three at worst, top five in the SEC on a consistent basis. So let me break it down. I think in football, basketball, men's basketball, and baseball, Texas, the University of Texas, and those three major sports should finish no worse than worse than fifth on a year-to-year basis. And I say year-to-year on average because, you, again, you you lose some guys to graduation, transfer portal, coaching turnover, um, injuries, stuff like that can make seasons just totally different. They can just make seasons totally tough and they're just out of your control. It's like the classic, hey, the ball just didn't bounce our way that year. That, that's true sometimes. Not really the ball didn't bounce your way. Sometimes that's even true, but – just injuries and intent and like and stuff that's inevitably going to happen. It's just a matter of how bad. But on a consistent basis, I think those big three sports in Austin should be no worse than top five on a year-to-year basis. But with that being said, I'm here to give you five bold for predictions, five bold predictions for the Texas Longhorns heading into their first three to five years of the Southeastern Conference. But first, we got to pay some bills, guys. And, guys, if you want to go to a game in this summer, a Major League Baseball game, whatever, Labor Day is really not that far away, Week Zero not that far away, go see our friends over at SeatGeek, guys, and go use the code SECU for 20% off your first purchase, guys. They're, they're no-brainers. I almost went to the Braves-Pirates game this week. It was Max Freed and uh, Paul Skeens, former LSU pitcher, you all know. I was going to go use SeatGeek if I was going to go. didn't end up going. So go use them, guys. Remember to use the code SECU for 20% off your first purchase with our friends over at SeatGeek. But guys, let's get to the five bowl predictions. Texas football has a top three conference record in their first three seasons in the SEC. As we all know here, guys, we're all football people. It's a line of scrimmage league, but Texas is built to win with guys like Kelvin Banks, Hayden Connor, Vernon Broughton, and Alfred Collins. Throw in, they had two top, top two NFL draft picks in the first two rounds. I mean, I mean, well, you had Tavondre Sweat in the second round go to the Titans, if I remember right. Byron Murphy went in the first round to the Browns. Uh, so, I mean, Bo Davis developed those guys. And new defensive line coach Kenny Baker coming over from the Miami Dolphins had his fair share of guys with Western Kentucky as well. Him and Kyle Flood, the offensive line coach and co-OC, know that it starts up front to win in this league. They know that. They're both not dumb. They definitely know that. Texas as a program knows that. That's why it's not going to be a shock to them when they come in this league. That's why I think the first three years are going to shell shock some of the top teams in the SEC and a lot of that middle of the pack team that's kind of like, hey, you don't play an SEC schedule on a year-to-year basis. I think people forget that. Texas is going to come shock this league. You win this league up front, and Texas is already there, and they're aware of that. So that's my first bold prediction. Texas football is a top three conference record in their first three seasons in the SEC. Second one here, guys, call me bold. Call me bold. Scared money don't make money. Whatever cliche about just a brave attempt at something. And, again, this is, these are bold predictions. So it's got to be – it can't just be, okay, I think Texas wins the SEC this year. That's not bold. 
This is bold, guys. My second one. Arch Manning, you know, Texas backup that Paul Feinbaum thinks is starting this year over Quinn Ewers, does not finish his career at Texas. Call me crazy. There's really no way of knowing this. You know what these – what these are again? Bold predictions, guys. I know I was going to shock some people. I'm sure in the comments people are going to be like, this guy's an idiot. Yeah, I mean, he would have transferred by now. Malik Murphy already transferred to Duke. Who's behind him? I'm just saying, you never know. Crazier things have happened in college. Well, I mean, if we're going bold, we're going bold, baby. And Arch Manning will not be on the 40 acres. He will not be graduating from there. Going to number three. Remember, we talked about this is big three sports. Texas should be one of the best in the SEC year to year. Well, time's up. Rodney Terry is fired within the next two seasons. He's currently 43-21 and 21 at Texas, 67% winning percentage. Remember, he took over for Chris Beard, had the domestic violence charge, got let go. Obviously, he's now the head coach in the SEC at Ole Miss. But I just don't get the vibe Chris Del Conte is going to stick with Rodney Terry just long term. Remember, he was an assistant for Chris Beard. And they were, what, a two seed that year? Chris Beard got fired, and last year they went out in the second round. So he hadn't been – or yeah – what were they? Or five? What were they this year? Six seeds? So yeah, and they went out in the second round in Tennessee. But another first weekend exit or a no tournament appearance for the next two years could get people stirring. Like not a real, just like not getting the Sweet Sixteen or just not making the tournament or not making it. Like I said, out of that first weekend, I think that's going to get people stirring. Because remember, the SEC is a premier conference right now in basketball, top two. Remember that Texas coming in, and you Sooner fans listen to this as well. But Texas, remember this. You got Alabama, who's going to be preseason number one. You got Arkansas. You got Auburn. You got Kentucky. Uh, you got Florida's coming on. Tennessee, you know Rick Barnes, very familiar with Rick Barnes. They're coming on. Guys, this is one of the better leagues in college basketball. Oh, Chris ba- Chris Beard's going to have Ole Miss going. Y'all familiar with him too? Texas has two coaches in this basketball league that they're familiar with, with Rick Barnes and Chris Beard. This league's deep, guys. Texas A&M, Buzz Williams and the boys. It could arguably be the best league in college basketball next year. It's not for the faint of heart. And I think Texas is going to get in this league and be like, you know what? It's a, we didn't really think of Texas fans. Because like, I, I put a poll out today. Would Texas fans rather be better – would they rather, rather their team be better in men's basketball or baseball? And it was pretty unanimous baseball, which is nothing wrong with that. You got a lot more tradition there. You got Augie Garrido. We'll get to Sloss Nagel in a minute. But – I think they're, it's really going to hit them that, hey, we could be really good at basketball. We had a phenomenal Moody Center we just built facility, which I'm going to try to go to that, by the way, the Alabama game, if that's on a weekend uh, in Austin. But yeah, I can see Chris Del Conte getting some pressure or even himself putting it on about, hey, we need to make a change for Rodney Terry. Because he was even the head coach, if I'm right, at Fresno State, and it didn't go well. And I think he's underachieved a little bit so far. But, again, my third bold prediction for Texas heading into the SEC is Rodney Terry is fired within the first two seasons. Heading number four, I just mentioned in baseball, big sport in Texas. Thanks to our guy, Augie Guerrero, really. But Jim Sloshnagel, he's been in the news, old former Texas A&M coach, was a win away from winning the national championship this past week, lost to Tennessee in game three after winning the first one. He is now the head Longhorn. He is the long, head Longhorn. I'm going to say he takes Texas to Omaha next year. Top four coach in the SEC right now. I mean, probably go Tony Vitello. I think Jim Sloshnagel's in that. Um, Dave Van Horn, Jay Johnson, um, Kevin O'Sullivan. I mean, the, the baseball league's so deep. I think that's the be- the league with the best coaches in the league. If you followed any of my stuff, I break down the top five coaches in all of SEC sports. I put three college baseball coaches there. And you could all made an argument, made more. But Slashnick goes by far already a top four to five SEC coach right now. And that probably puts him in the top seven, eight overall in the country easily. I mean, the guy's been to seven College World Series, five at TCU. We forget about his time in Fort Worth at times. He's already two in his first three years at AM, he went to two his first year, and they lost in the in a regional to Stanford. They had to be beaten twice in Palo Alto, and they were. That's where they found Brady Montgomery, by the way. And then they went to Omaha, had, took it to game three, won the first one, didn't win it. So Jim Slosnigle takes Texas to Omaha next year. Uh, fairly confident in that. And then five, Texas wins a national championship within the next three seasons in either football or baseball. I think Steve Sarkeesian, Jim Schlossnagel are too good of coaches at the top of their sports not to get this done here soon. And give Cristo Conte credit. You can make an argument that he is the best AD in the country in the SEC um, in his hire so far. I think I think it's a fair conversation between him, Greg Byrne at Alabama, and I think Danny White's done a solid job at Tennessee as well. But Cristo Conte, for sure, one of the better ADs. I think his uh, uh, he's going to bear the fruits of his labor here. 
very, very soon by either Steve Sarkeesian cashing it in here in this new 12-team playoff or Jim Slosnickel, a coach he hired in the last week in a very just ninja kind of way through the middle of the night. Give him credit for doing it. I mean, we're all kind of mad about him hiring Jim Slosnickel. I shouldn't say we all. I think that gets more of the spotlight, the narrative. But I think we're also forgetting how great of a coach Texas has right now on their campus on the 40 acres on the diamond in Jim Slosnickel. So my fifth one, Texas wins a national championship within the next three seasons in either football or baseball. And I'm just ranking them in confidence of order. I do think Texas is going to finish in the top three conference record in the first three seasons. I'm fairly confident in that one. Arch Manning, dude, I said it was bold prediction time. I'm not near as confident because I have no factual data to go off of. Remember, these are bold predictions, bold predictions. But uh, my least confident one there, very confident Rodney Terry is probably fired here in the next two years. Very confident in that one. Jim Slosh, will take an eight, Texas to Omaha next year. We'll see how the portal goes for him. But Slosh, he's been seven times already. He's taken every team he's ever coached for the most part in that power five. Level. I mean, even when he was at UNLV, I think he took him to a regional. But five Omaha appearances at TCU, two at AM. He's going to get one at Texas at least. I wouldn't be surprised next year. So I would, wouldn't be surprised. So I'm going to go bold and say they do. And then one I'm pretty confident in is Texas wins a national championship here within the next um, three seasons, either in football or baseball because Steve Sarkeesian and we mentioned Jim Sausnick are just two good of coaches at the top of their sport. But guys, I just want to welcome the University of Texas and the Longhorns into the Southeastern Conference. I, I think they fit perfectly. Like I mentioned at the beginning, it should be um, a fun transition, and I'm excited about it. But I just wanted to bring up five bold predictions. Really, they got to be bold. It, I wasn't going to go soft on you. So I'm sure I'll get a lot of help for the Arch Manning one. But guys, we're going bold, man. Scared money, don't make money. But again, I'm your host here, Dave Shumate, longtime SEC football personnel guy. I uh, worked eight years in college football, um, bringing you all the action here um, at SEC unfiltered platform give us a follow here on all our social media platforms again it's sec content 24 7 365 you have a phenomenal evening